Here are the steps in analyzing data with IPTW. Step 1. Assess balance in characteristics between the groups using the unweighted data set. EZR has automatic way of doing this. Step 2. Create inverse probability weighting using a logistic regression. Number 3. To avoid extreme weights, trim propensity score with below or upper 1 percentile. Number 4. Assess balance in characteristics between the groups with the weighted data set. And number 5. And we perform outcome analysis. And outcome analysis is where we assess the effect of treatment on the outcome variables. And for this, and we will, we will use generalized linear model or Cox proportional hazard regression. Step 1. Assess balance in characteristics between the groups with the unweighted data set. Okay, I'll go to graphs and tables and then choose summary table of sample characteristics. And then this box, we put the variable swung. We want to compare baseline characteristics between the group, whether who had a casualization and who doesn't have casualization. And then these three box, we want to put variables, baseline variables, we want to compare. And this box, we choose categorical variables. And these two box, we choose continuous variables. And uh, left box, if you want to show the data with mean and standard deviation, and we choose variable in this box. And if you want to show the data with median and interquartile range, you put the variables, you select variables here. And here is the table. And let's do this in easy R. And let's read the data set, file import data, read text data from file, clipped or URL. And then we have a CSV file, so choose this one. the data set and open. And now we have a data successfully imported into EZR. And baseline table, you go to graphs and table and summary tables of sample characteristics. And here we put swank and we put the categorical variables and sepsis and continuous variable. We need to push control button to select multiple variables in this box. Age albumin, age albumin, the severity score called APS, heart rate, respiratory rate. And by looking at the baseline table, we can see imbalance between comparison groups. And there are more septic patients in right heart castellization group. And the castellization group is a little bit younger and lower in albumin level and uh, more severe much sicker patient and so we need to adjust for this baseline imbalance. In fact, we should not be using fee value to assess the balance and instead we need to be using standardized mean difference. And if we want standardized mean difference less than 0 0.1 to indicate the good balance and as you see standardized mean difference and most of the variable have the value greater than 0 0.1. And so based on this, again, and we do see the evidence for imbalance between the groups. And why you have to use standardized mean difference? And because p-value is not a good indicator for a balance between groups because it is affected by sample size. A larger sample size can result in a p-value less than 0 0.05, even if the difference is relatively small. And so we like to use the mean difference as another way to check for imbalance. And however, just to see mean difference is difficult to compare between group difference. And because each variable has a different range, and for example, age can range from 18 to 80 years old, and a BMI can change from 15 to 40. And some biomarker might change, uh, might range from 0 to, 0 to 10,000. And so it is difficult to just compare mean difference. And to make comparison possible, we need to standardize the mean difference. Standardized mean difference can be obtained by dividing the absolute value of the mean difference by the pooled standard deviation across the groups. Okay, uh, to do that, actually I forgot to do that, but uh, you can just click the yes 
for the option showing standardized difference. Okay, it's very easy to get those values. So step two, we compute the inverse probability of treatment weighting. To do that, go to logistic regression. And then this time choose swung, but the numeric coding of swung variable, swung dot num. And then uh, we put those six covariate in the explanatory variable box. So this will create propensity score as a function of these six variables to estimate probability of receiving chastisation. When we do propensity score matching and we click this box, make propensity score variable. But in this case, we are doing IPTW analysis. So by clicking this box, this will automatically create a propensity score as well as inverse of the propensity score. This is a propensity score and then this is the inverse probability of weighting. Let's do this in easier and go to discrete variables in logistic regression. And here we choose swung dot num and here we include age, albumin, APS, heart rate, respiratory rate, sepsis. And you can actually include a lot more than this. Uh, as an example, I just include the six variable. Then click this box, inverse probability of treatment weighting, and then click OK. And then let's review data set and scroll to the right. And then you will see propensity score as well as inverse probability of treatment weighting. So when you compute propensity score, easier automatically return these graphs. So you can examine the distribution of propensity score with the original data set and also with weighted data set. And you may see the distribution is not overlapping to each other because it's just a different sample size. Okay. And the different sample size is okay. So as long as and these distribution are lined up to each other. And so you may imagine if the, we reduce sample size of this orange, uh, the distribution, it could be similar to the blue, right? So the overlapping distribution is just a matter of a differential sample size. Easy or calculate stabilized ATE weight. So if you want to convey your analysis using ATT weights instead, uh, this is how to create ATT weights. So you go to active data set variables and then choose create a new variable. And then and you specify the new variable name for ATT weights. And then just the type if else statements here. So what I am doing is I'm just typing this PS over 1 minus PS. This means if there is no castization and assign this and otherwise assign one. So next uh, let's trim extreme weights. We are going to trim data set with the propensity score less than 1 percentile and also greater than 99 percentile. To find where the 1 percentile and 99 percentile point, what you do is uh, you go to numeric summaries, just hand type these two numbers and then uh, also uh, put this box, the swung variable here, okay, and then click OK, and then that will show this result. And here you see one percentile is higher with crystallization group, so we choose to cut here, right? and then also 99 percentile is lower with the castellate without castellation group. So choose this value. Data point lying out of range will be deleted. Propensity score dot glm1 and then here we need to hunt type dot zero one comma and also here uh, dot nine nine comma and make sure to set up grouping variable, which would be swang.num, and OK, and click show graph, and click OK. And we will trim the data at 0 0.165, and also at 0 0.74. To trim the data set, go to active data set, rows, 
create subset data set, and then type propensity score greater than 0 0.16 and propensity score less than 0 0.74 and click OK.